Right now, you're looking at DVR recorded off of my DJI FPV goggles, but there's something different about this DVR. It's got on-screen display overlaid on it. And you're probably thinking, what do you mean, Bart? Well, I know that if I root my V2 goggles or my V1 goggles, and I root my Caddx Vista or other air unit, and then install WTFOS, then I can get OSD in the goggles. Yes, that's true. But what you haven't been able to do before now is overlay that OSD on the DVR footage, just like you used to do with analog, right? You play back the DVR, you've got the OSD in the DVR. And that's super useful for a lot of reasons. But the problem is that the DJI V2 goggles are not powerful enough to re-encode the video and overlay that OSD. But today there's a solution. There is a tool that you can run on your computer on the desktop and it can take that OSD information and overlay it on the uh, goggle DVR after the fact. That's what we're going to do today. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. There are a couple of prerequisites to doing the thing that I'm going to show you how to do in this video. And I want to tell you what they are right here at the front of the video, even though it means that some of you are going to realize this doesn't apply to you and you're going to click away. But I care more about wasting your time than I do about you know hurting my analytics. In order to do what I'm going to show you in this video, you need to have any DJI video transmitter other than the O3 air unit. So Caddx Vista, Runcam Link, original DJI air unit, they're all going to be able to do what we're doing in this video. And you need to have the V1 or V2 goggles, not the goggles 2. If you have the goggles 2, if you have an O3 air unit, or if you have a Vista video transmitter, but you're using it with the goggles 2, none of the stuff I'm going to be showing you will apply. And the reason that none of that stuff will apply is because all of the stuff that I'm showing you requires that the hardware be rooted and have WTFOS installed on it. WTFOS is the piece of code that makes it possible to do what we're doing. And in case you don't know what WTFOS is, it is a special piece of software that can be installed on the goggles. It is third-party, unauthorized, unofficial software installed without DJI's consent. Isn't that fun? <laughs> you can't install stuff on the goggles. They're my goggles. I'll do what I want. And if you want to know how to root your goggles, and you want to know how to install WTFOS, I have a video about that. That's not going to be this video. I'll put that link down in the video description. If you need to be able to do that, head on down there, pause this video, go root your goggles, install WTFOS, and then come on back. Uh, by the way, I just said root your goggles, but you also need to root and install WTFOS on the air unit. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is power up the goggles. We'll do the goggles first and then we'll do the air unit. It's the same steps though. We're going to power them up. We're going to plug in USB and we're going to go to fpv.wtf. That's the website that WTFOS is based off of. And uh, once the goggles connect, it should automatically connect to the device. Uh, after that, we're going to go to package manager. We're going to scroll down and we're going to find the MSP OSD package manager. Now you can see in my case, it is already installed. If you haven't installed this previously, you're going to hit the blue install button and install the MSP OSD package. And that is the thing that will enable you to get full Betaflight OSD between your flight controller and your DJI goggles. Now, if you've already got that installed like I do, it's a good idea to go ahead and go to uh, WTFOS. Yes, go to WTFOS and hit update, and that will update your install of WTFOS and update any packages that you've got installed in case they're not on the latest version. And what I'm going to show you in this video does require you to be on a recent version of the MSP OSD uh, plugin because you used to have to enable this OSD functionality manually, and it's only in a recent version that they automatically turned it on. So if you're not on the latest version, the things I'm showing you in this video aren't going to work. Once we've done that for the goggles, we'll go ahead and unplug them and we'll do the same for the air unit. And the air unit has a tendency to overheat on the bench, especially if it's on high output power. So I'm also going to get this fan, apologies for the noise in the background, and have this fan blowing on it so it doesn't overheat. Now plug USB into the side of the Vista and uh, sure enough, the website just detected it immediately. Uh, you can go to the package manager and install the MSP OSD plugin. 
uh, or if it's already installed, you can go to the update page and just hit update. You can see here, my MSP OSD plugin is on 070. That is not the latest. The latest is 0 0.10, so I do need to update. And I got a bunch of error messages. I'll try again, it's your problem. Do the thing. Oh, that time it worked. Yay, everything up to date. The next thing we're gonna need to do is get our OSD working. And I do have a detailed video about how to get the OSD working, which I'll link in the video description below, but I'll go through the basic steps uh, here really quickly and superficially just to make sure that this quad is set up correctly. And here I'm gonna plug the USB into the flight controller, not the Vista, and start up Betaflight. The first thing I need to do to get the OSD working is go to the ports tab and enable MSP for whichever UART number the air units TX and RX lines are connected to. Uh, in my case, that's UART1. And I also need in Betaflight 4.4, this step is new to enable VTX MSP plus display port uh, for that UART. Once I've done that, I'm gonna save and reboot. Once that's done, I'm gonna go to the OSD tab and if I want to take advantage of Betaflight's new high-definition OSD, I'm going to set the video format to HD. And I'm going to hit save. At this point, I'm going to plug the quadcopter in, and we're going to look in the goggles, and we're going to see if the dang thing is working. It should be working. And when we power up the goggles, what we should see is, look in the lower right, it should say, waiting for OSD, if the goggles have the OSD plugin installed. And then if the air unit and flight controller are all working correctly, we should see uh, some actual OSD information appearing. Ah, yeah. Look on the left side uh, where it says bat less than full and shows the battery voltage. Sure enough, we have got uh, OSD coming from the flight controller. Um, if that's not working for you, there are a couple other things you might need to do in order to get it working. And I'm gonna refer you to the full setup video uh, for the HD OSD linked in the video description. At this point, let's assume that you've got OSD working and you can, once you've completed these steps, you should find that when you record DVR on the SD card on the goggles, there's an additional file there. There is the video file, of course, as you would expect. There is the SRT subtitle file, which contains some information about the connection, like the latency, the bit rate, and signal strength, and so forth. And then there's an additional file, the OSD file. And this is what we're gonna use to overlay the on-screen display on our DVR video. Now, the tool that we're gonna to use to do this is at the URL that you see here, and it is linked in the video description below. I would like to point out that this is the development site for this tool, and it will soon be moved into WTFOS Configurator. So if you're watching this video at some point in the future, this URL may or may not work, and you may instead need to go to fpv.wtf, the main WTFOS site, and you will see a button here or a section here to overlay the OSD information. For, for today, we're just gonna be working off of this development site. And the first thing we need to do is load the fonts that are gonna be used to draw that on-screen display. And you do that by downloading and selecting four font files. In order to find the font files for use with this utility, I'm gonna to go to the github.com FPVWTF page. Again, I'll link down in the video description below. And if I scroll down, there is a section, there we go, suggested third-party fonts. I'll put a link directly to that. Uh, one of them is from uh, the developer Knifa, I think is how you say it. One's from Sneaky, one's from Vicewise. And basically, we can just look at these and decide which one we think looks the best. Mm -hmm. Oh, Sneaky, I don't see sample fonts there. And Vicewise, oh, here, Vicewise is showing me what their fonts look like. Uh, one of the things you need to keep in mind is that the font packs are different depending on whether you're using RGPilot, Betaflight, or iNav. So you will need to download the correct font for the correct firmware that you're using. And if you're using KISS, which also supports this, I don't know which font is correct. Well, since Vicewise gave us a nice graphic showing us what the font looks like, I'm gonna use Vice Wises, uh, but you can use whichever one you think looks the best. And we're gonna go, how do, where do I get it? Uh, releases, here it is in releases. And where's my downloads? Here it is, a download, italic HD color font package. And if I open that zip file up, I find this, 
And in here, we've got these files. Uh, Vicewise doesn't seem to have variants for iNav or RG Pilot. I'm going to guess that this is Betaflight only. Fortunately, I'm running Betaflight, so everything's going to be okay. So I'm going to take these four files and I'm going to copy them somewhere on my hard drive. For example, I'm going to go onto my Dropbox and in my RC Utilities folder where I put all this nonsense, I'm going to make a new folder and name it uh, WTFOS Fonts. And then I'm going to name, make a subfolder named ViceWise, and I'm going to just drag those there so I can find them later when I need them. Then I'm going to head back to the OSD overlay page, and I'm going to choose font 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, and I'm going to navigate to that folder. Font 1 is going to need to be named font underscore bf dot bin. Font 2 is going to be font bf 2 dot bin. Font 1HD is going to be font bfhd.bin. And font 2HD is going to be font bfhd2.bin. Uh, if you're doing the RG Pilot or INAV versions, then they won't be named BF. They'll be named something else. Hey guys, it's Joshua from the future. I found out something cool about the fonts. Um, if you choose the sneaky FPV font and you go in and you choose the chroma version, see how it says chroma here? Or if we go back here, it says chroma. Yeah. And if you choose the chroma font, then what happens is that it overlays the video with green and the video is not there. And that confused me because I thought it must be a bug, but then I realized, no, this is designed to give you something that you can green screen out in your video editor and then you can overlay this OSD on any footage you want, including GoPro footage. That's pretty cool. Next, I'm going to select the video file that I want to overlay the on-screen display onto. And just to be clear, this has to be an unmodified uh, DVR file straight out of the goggles. As far as I can tell, you're not. A, I don't know why this wouldn't work, but it won't do it for something like uh, maybe a GoPro file or something like that. So I'm going to pick DJI G010, and I'm going to pick the OSD file that goes with it, and it's just going to have the same name right by it on the SD card. Once I've done all of that, I can hit start and it will begin to overlay that file onto a whole separate video file. Uh, so we're just gonna name that the default, which is DJI 010-OSD.mp4. We're gonna hit save and ba-bam, here's what we get. Now this has been running for a few minutes and it's still not done. How long it takes is gonna depend on your, your computer, your processor and so forth, but when it's done, you will have a whole separate MP4 file with the OSD in it, just like you kind of wished that you could get in the beginning. There's another thing you can do with these font files that I want to tell you about, but before I do, I want to just briefly remind you I have a Patreon. Patreon is one of the best ways that you can support me. You pay just a couple bucks a month or more. You pay whatever amount you want, really. It's totally up to you. Whatever value you feel like you get out of my content, if today's the day that you feel like I earned your support, head on down to the video description, find the Patreon link at the video description, and I'd love to have you as a supporter. If you haven't earned it yet, I'm going to keep making content. I hope you keep watching, enjoying, and learning from my content, and maybe that day will come. The thing that I want to tell you you can do with the font files is this. See, here's the thing. Right now, this video file has these beautiful color fonts, but that's not what I saw in my goggles when I was flying. I saw boring, default, non-italics, non-color fonts. And it turns out you can actually install these font files on the goggles too. And I'm gonna tell you how to do that in another video, which I will put a card on screen to go to and a link in the video description below. And yeah, why would, of course you want the font files on the goggles too. You don't want to just see beautiful fonts after the fact. You want to customize your goggles and make them look exactly how you want. Card, link, I'll see you there.